Okay, moving on, we are going to go back to using one of our shapes here. Now, just like we did in our simple fold and just like we did here on our little more complicated fold, a lot of this is repetitive. It's just about how you apply that skill. So I'm going to do a zigzag fold, forward, back, forward, back. And you'll notice that if you do it with a full shape of paper instead of a slip of paper, you're going to end up with a fan. We call this an accordion fold, forward, back, forward, back, because it gives you the corrugated accordion bellows, like when you see them being able to push in and out. That's because it will become collapsible. So here I go. If I did my forward, back, forward, back correctly, when I open it up, you will get that zigzag shape, just like you did when we created a line, except now it is a full space. Now you could just have that and leave it like it is and attach it, creating some texture. You could bend it to create a star shape, and you could attach that either vertically, horizontally, however you wanna do that. You can pinch it in the center and then spread the ends that will give you like a bow shape. You can fold it in half. Okay, that will give you more of a fan shape. All right, let's continue with that idea of taking a simple idea and then creating it uh, and manipulating it more to be more complicated. We're gonna work more with the cylinder shape and then we added these tabs to connect them to the feet. Now we can do that kind of in an opposite way. If you take your piece of paper and you add snips. Some of you might remember in kindergarten we made pumpkins and we snipped the grass all the way down. You don't want your snips to go all the way to the bottom. You wanna leave that bottom edge uncut. Okay, so right now my fringe is not three-dimensional. It's all there, you can see all those teeny tiny snips, but it's not three-dimensional yet. Now it's very similar to how we made the snake, how we made the cylinder, except this time I'm going to show you how we can roll this up so you're taking multiple techniques here. Now I'm gonna roll it a little bit and then add just a little glue. Roll it a little more, add a little glue. So I'm just rolling this up, just like you would roll up a regular paper for a spiral, except now this one has a cut edge. Okay, now when you have this all glued together, remember 10 seconds is our magic number, you can hold it for 10 seconds and then you can start folding these out gently. Now, I used to love to make these at Thanksgiving time, and then um, I would make my mom put them on the turkey legs on the Thanksgiving table. So it's kind of like those little chef hats, those little turkey decorating at the ends of the feet. So that's a really cool, fun, three-dimensional way that you can add this. Then all you would do is you would put glue around the edge of the bottom, and then you could place that wherever you wanted. Just by letting it sit there, it should dry. So you can see that we are creating different uh, shapes, more complicated additions, just by repeating what we've already learned, but by continuing to manipulate it, you can create more interest in your three-dimensional uh, creation. Okay, if you have your fan shape, you can add it just like that. You can put one edge down, have it stick up. You can leave it flat or you can create feet for it so that it stands up. And all you would do to create feet for it is you would take a small piece of paper. I have an extra strip of blue here. You would cut two little pieces, fold each of them in half so they make the letter L. And then half of your L would connect to your piece and the other half would connect to your paper. There we go. So you can see how this is getting more interesting and more intricate than just our simple folds like we practiced back in first grade, okay? It's all the same ideas. It's just taking it up a notch to create more interest in your work. Let's do a few more. Okay, so moving on a little bit, we're gonna take another line here. Because just like before, you can fold these anyway. You can bend it, you can fold it, you can curl it. However, it's still going to be straight on both sides. So another way to add interest to your work as an older student is to create your own shape or create your own line. And you can do that by just cutting an edge off, or instead of cutting it into thin strips that are straight, 
you can create a line. So I'm doing a bouncing line on this one. And I'm making sure not to touch the edge because remember, when you're building with paper, those scraps can become useful. So now I have kind of a more interesting line here, but I also have this cool piece I can save for later. And maybe I'll do it bumpy on that side and then I'll wave it on the bottom. So even though each of you got somewhere between like 15 and 20 lines and probably between like four to six shapes, I did a little mix and match. Depending on how you cut your shapes and how you use those pieces will really depend on how much you end up with because now this one black line is now three black lines. Okay, and then with that line, you can do the same thing. You can bend it and attach it. You could fold it. You could curl it. I think I'm going to curl this one just around my finger. It's a larger paper, so I want kind of a larger spiral. Wrap it up. Give it a good tug. Slide it off carefully. You can always pull it tighter once it's off your finger. You can just kind of tug the end. Wait a second and then let it go. So there you have a spiral. If you extend your spiral ends, then you will get your looping line. So that's another way that you can kind of create more interest is just by changing the shape of the line that you're using by using those magical things called scissors. So you can add that wherever you want. Now, right now, I am not creating a very tall three-dimensional sculpture. And that is just because I want you to be able to see each of these things. Remember, your job is going to be to build up also. So just like on this one, how I used this castle line on top of the curve line and built up so that it's tall, that's what you want to be working on on yours is creating a tall three-dimensional sculpture. However, just for the sake of um, you being able to see each of these and not covering them up, I'm going to leave mine as a sort of a shallow sculpture. I'm going to fold this one as a zigzag. This was one of my scraps from the black piece that I cut. And now since it's thinner, it's going to be a little flimsier, has a little more movement to it. go. Uh, and I'm not sure what I want to do with this one yet, so I'm going to put that off to the side. So just like we were talking about before, by cutting your strips into smaller strips, it's going to give you a more delicate look, but it will also allow you to have more pieces. So I'm going to do that again here, and we're just going to do a simple build to get a tall space. I know I'm doing most of mine shallow so that you can see it, but I do want you to see how you can do something simple. I'm gonna show you like the simplest thing, but how to make it look really cool just by repeating a step. That one's really long, I'm gonna snip it in half. Okay, you can do this with any fold. I'm going to do it with a rainbow curve just by bending the paper. But remember, anytime you bend the paper, you have to add little feet so that it can stick. So I will add the glue to the bottom of those. I'm going to add this one right here. It's still 10 seconds anytime. Now, you might be thinking, Ms. Sikowski, each of these times I count to 10 seconds, it really adds up to a lot of time. That is correct. That is why you have two weeks to work on this because I know that it takes a little extra time. That's why the first week you are supposed to build your basic structure, right? Your strong basic structure. These are gonna be really strong because they're thick. You can see that when I push on it, it does not even like to move, okay? Your strong structure should be first. Let that dry. Let that glue dry so completely that you can pick it up and shake it with nothing coming off. After it's dry, then you can start adding all of your little intricacies to it. So I've done the same thing here, adding my feet. Now I'm just gonna add this one right on top of the other one. Let's take that paper clip off. Okay, so you can see it now how it's kind of turning into this ice cream cone, upside down ice cream cone shape that has a lot of movement. Okay, it wiggles and jiggles. 
that's the fun part about adding these thinner lines is that you kind of get a lot of really cool interest in them. So I hope that you're having fun while you're creating. Oh, I think I'm going to add this right down the edge now. I hope you're having fun while you're creating this. And I hope that you're thinking of different ways that you can manipulate the paper to kind of change it and make it more interesting. This project can be as interesting or as boring as you want, depending on how much work you're willing to put into it and how interesting you are trying to make each of your papers. So the more delicate and interesting each of your papers are, the more interesting and delicate your 3D sculpture will be. My fourth and fifth graders, you are building on a 3D form, okay? I keep reminding you of that. That means that in the end, yours might be something like this, okay? Where you can look inside of your sculpture. It should be three-dimensional, something you can pick up that does not sit flat. The last shape we are going to work on uh, is a cone shape. So just like before, you're gonna need one of your papers here. Find something that you can trace with. Go ahead, trace around your shape. You're going to need a circle to make a cone. And then you'll cut it out. Now once you have that circle cut out, you're just going to cut right to the middle of it, wherever you can try to get to the middle, and then just start bending it. Now as you bend it, you will create a perfect cone shape. The tighter you bend it, the smaller your cone will get at the base, or if you have it only overlapping just slightly, then you will have a lower cone. Okay, so however tall or low that you want that. Now mine didn't come out quite perfect. I'm gonna give it a trim. There we go, it's a little bit better. Add your glue. Remember, the less glue you use, the faster it dries. More glue does not mean it's going to stick better. More glue means it's going to take longer to dry. And now I have my cone shape. Now I could add this just down on the paper by doing a flap technique or by adding feet to it like I did on the fan. Or you can use it um, sideways and have things coming out of it. Oh, actually, I kind of like that idea, so I'm going to stick with that one. So I'm gonna add this on the side here. There we go. I'm going to do one more repeating um, idea and then I'm going to let you guys continue on your own without me. I hope that you've been working along with me while I've been creating so that you don't watch this entire video and then have to go back and do it all. The whole point of me doing this is to do it with you. So I'm taking my shape and I'm just gonna cut strips of paper. Now, if you do not have enough strips, if you've really gotten into building and you need more strips, come see me in the art room and I will give you more paper. That is not a problem. Uh, if you are at home, remember, you can always use any paper that your grown-ups say that you can use. Please don't just start cutting up their magazines. Make sure you always ask permission first. So I have a few strips of paper here, okay? Now, as we repeat, what that means is, I'm just going to take these and fold them, sorry, not fold them, bend them, so that I get this little raindrop shape. I'm going to glue the ends of the raindrop together so that it's pointy at the top and curved at the bottom. Glue it together and I'm just gonna set it off to the side. Okay, so now we have a bunch of little raindrop shapes folded over here, okay? What you can do with those is start attaching them together. Now, if I put them all together end to end, I would end up, you can see it's starting to look a little bit like a flower shape if I have them all end to end going around. It's not finished yet, but you would start getting a flower shape but you don't have to attach them like that. You can attach them however you want. So I'm gonna have mine kind of growing. Okay, and here's the shape that I created just by repeating a shape over and over again. And then you can decide how you want to attach that or where you want it to go. Okay. 